Even if you have the latest and greatest computer with fancy technology like Wi-Fi 6 for example, it's only as good as the weakest link in your home network, which is usually a crappy router or bad Wi-Fi coverage. And when you're trying to download that massive game update or watch 4K YouTube videos, or videos from a different tube, the buffer icon of death is not what you want to see. Not to mention, I also have a gaming PC in my office where the ping can sometimes spike quite a bit when using Wi-Fi. But how can you fix this? Well, you might have seen a few videos floating around by this guy who calls himself Linus, and he happens to have a small YouTube channel, an obsession with dropping things, but he also loves improving networks. And in one of his recent videos, he tried a few solutions to fix his favorite employee's Wi-Fi issue. And they worked okay, but no matter how you try to improve your network, either through a new router or some kind of Wi-Fi mesh system, for example, these solutions usually cost hundreds of dollars and aren't as good as a simple $2 ethernet cable, simply attaching your computer directly to your router. So it made me realize my own Wi-Fi network is fine. It's not super slow, but it's not super fast either. But I just sit at my desk all day. I mean, there's no reason why I can't attach both my MacBook and my gaming PC to my network with an ethernet cable to get the fastest possible speeds. The only problem? Well, the people who developed this house were morons. My internet connection comes in from the street to the garage and it's literally at the furthest point away from the living area. The cable would have to snake through the garage, across the living room, up the stairs, and across the hall into my office. Sure, I could have used some kind of power line system to send the network connection to different rooms using the existing electrical wiring in the walls, but again, those things are expensive and have their own drawbacks. So to save myself hundreds of dollars or tripping over a cable all day long, I decided to take matters into my own hands and install a direct line from my router up into my office to get those ultra fast gamer speeds. But just before we get started on this project, I have an offer for you that you might find interesting. Are you sick of paying all these different subscription fees for multiple apps? Well, so am I, that is, until I started using Setapp, which gives me access to over 240 Mac and iOS apps for only one monthly subscription fee. And there's no better time to get it than now because Setapp has a special holiday offer. It's called the Pros Essentials Pack, which unlocks special plans, not just for Setapp, but also for 1Password and Masterclass. 1Password helps over 15 million users to stay protected online. It's an industry leading password password manager which securely stores all your passwords and sensitive information which no one can access except yourself. And Masterclass is a learning platform containing classes designed by industry experts. Choose from a library of 180 plus classes in topics like business, design, science, tech and more. So make sure you check out the link in the description below to access both 1Password and Masterclass and all 240 other apps with up to 40% off setup in this limited time offer only until January 2nd, 2023. So how can I get this cable from my router in the garage up to the second floor of the house and into my office? Well, it needs to go into the walls. Unfortunately, this build has metal framework and the insulation between the walls was packed so tightly that this was just impossible. Luckily, there's a weird hollow extrusion on the exterior of the building for what I believe is just aesthetic reasons. And it goes all the way up to the roof. It's basically like an internal vertical tunnel. And it just so happens to be right next to where my internet comes into the building. If I could run a cable through here, up into the roof and back out through the cupboard ceiling in my office, I'd be good to go. And here's all the tools and material I needed. It ended up costing about $50, which is much cheaper than what I would have had to fork out for a power line adapter that has worse overall performance. So let's get this process started by first selecting the type of cable I wanted. If you didn't already know, there are different types of network cabling. Each one is slightly better and offers more performance and features than the previous version. Cat6 is currently one of the most common, but Cat6A is probably preferable here because I wanted the ability to connect my NAS in the garage to my computer via a 10 gigabit connection in the future. Most network connections these days are only one gigabit. So 10 gigabit means there can be up to 10 times 
more data being transmitted through the cable. CAT6A cabling is really good for this because it has more shielding and is just a more robust cable overall when compared to CAT6. But it costs more and is harder to work with due to the increased shielding. However, CAT6 cable is able to support 10 gigabit speeds as long as the length of the cable run is roughly less than 50 meters, which I would be well under. After checking for any power lines behind the plaster, the first step was cutting a small hole in the plaster near the access point in the garage. This would allow me to go up into the roof, tie a small weight to the end of a string, and have someone in the garage pull it through the other end. Bonus points if you can have a guard waiting at the hole to make sure no creepy things come out of the wall. Then all I needed to do was tape the network cable to the string and pull it back up into the roof. And I ended up pulling two separate lengths of cable through so that I could have two different connections. One for a standard one gigabit ethernet connection to connect devices to my local area network and a separate 10 gigabit ethernet connection that I could use for my NAS in the future. To temporarily route the cable through the roof, I used electrical tape to tie the cable to the roof support beams. I'd come back later and do this properly. Now this was probably the trickiest part for me because the crawl space in the roof was tiny and was also extremely hot. So quick note to self, try not to do this in the middle of the Australian summer, wait till winter. Uh, it's at night, but it's still boiling up here. After the cable was run, I had to then cut and terminate each end of the ethernet cable. This might seem a bit daunting at first, but it's actually really easy. In order to work properly, straight through ethernet cables must be terminated with the same pin configurations on either end. Two different wiring standards exist for wired ethernet, T568A, also known as A wiring, and T568B, known as B wiring. It doesn't really matter which one you choose as long as it's consistent and you use the same one. So I just went with the A standard for everything. I cut each end of the cable, making sure to leave about a meter of extra cable length inside the wall, just in case I wanted to make changes at a later date and needed a bit more length. Then I stripped the protective sheath back to expose the individual wires, cut away the internal harness and pull string and attached the wires to an RJ45 keystone jack using the A wiring standard, which is conveniently listed in a diagram on this particular keystone. To finalize the wiring process, I had to crimp each individual wire to the keystone by using a crimping tool. This is essentially pressing the wire against a metal connector pin inside the keystone, which forms a connection from the wire to whatever ethernet cable you end up plugging into that keystone jack. I also wrapped any exposed wires in electrical tape to keep everything together and provide a bit more protection from any kind of interference that might disrupt the signal. And that was pretty much it. I screwed the keystone plate into the hole I'd cut in the wall and attached the cover. The final job looked pretty discreet, which is what I wanted. I did the exact same process in the cupboard ceiling upstairs. If you're wondering why I put this in the cupboard, well, again, I couldn't get through the metal struts and insulation in the walls. This was the next best option without ripping heaps of plaster out. If you live in an older house or with different types of walls, this is probably a much easier process for you. And that's it. All I have to do now is plug an ethernet cable directly from my router in the garage into one of the new ethernet ports in the wall and plug an ethernet cable from the upstairs ceiling port directly into my computers upstairs. I used the network switch from Ubiquity to split the network and have two cables to attach my MacBook and my gaming PC to my router downstairs. And if you're wondering what laptop dock I'm using, it's the TS4 Thunderbolt 4 dock from CalDigit. It has an ethernet port in the back and it connects everything on my desk, including ethernet, to my MacBook with just one Thunderbolt cable. I made a review on this dock, by the way, if you wanna check it out. Link down in the description. But how about the improvements? Was all of this worth it over just simply leaving my Wi-Fi network as it was? Yes, and I mean, this is pretty obvious going from a wireless to a wired network, but I saw several noticeable improvements. For example, during gaming, ping was reduced, lag spikes decreased, and whenever a huge game update came out, looking at you Warzone 2, I noticed a significant increase in download speed 
and the speed remained consistent. But perhaps the biggest benefit was the speed with which I could connect to my NAS that I recently moved to my garage because I was mainly using it for storage and editing my work projects on my internal Mac SSD. Over Wi-Fi, the speed was pathetic, only averaging a few megabytes per second. Over Ethernet though, I was pretty much maxing out the one gigabit connection and everything was much faster. I'll eventually connect to this NAS via a 10 gigabit connection, but I don't need it right now, so that's a future upgrade. Overall, I'm glad I did this little project and I kind of wish I did it as soon as I moved here. Now, if you're facing some of the same issues that I was, or you use your computer at a desk most of the time, definitely have a look around your house and see what's possible. There are also tons of tutorial videos on YouTube that show you the exact steps. So those juicy wired internet speeds may be possible for you after all.